Hello friends, Marcy here, and I'm back to share um, a new find or actually a new deal with you. Um, as you know, Lamy, Lamy pens are not um, new finds, um, but this is a model that I have never, although I have several Lamy pens um, in the Safari and the All Star models, this is a model I have never um, Desired. Um, I know a lot of people have touted its uh, reliability um, and streamlined uh, pen body, but um, it's just something that I never really wanted, but I've also always been curious about. And this is a, of course, Lamy made in Germany. So we have the outer sleeve and the drawer with some silicone gel. Um, so this is, oh my goodness, <laughs> of course that's a spring action hinge there, <laughs> giving me fits. Inside um, the plush felt uh, lined box is the logo for Lam Lamy Lamy. Uh, design made in Germany. And this is a little um, larger in girth. I expect it to be slimmer in model for some reason. And I think that's because of my, again, the lack in urgency or desire to purchase this pin body. So let me see what else is in this box real quick um, as you gaze at that design and all we have inside the box is a warranty card and that's it it needs no cartridge or converter as it is a piston fill so let's close that spring hinge one last time and come over here and talk about the pen so this is the uh, Lamy 2000 it is a streamlined design with a seamless transition. So I'm gonna pull the cap off and show you that in just a moment. But there's nothing fancy or fabulous or frivolous about the color or design of this pin. As a matter of fact, let me grab. One reason I was never attracted to it is because it simply remind, reminded me of the Paper Mate flare pin. So maybe that's why I thought it to be uh, would be a little more slim. Because every time I saw the, the Lamy I, uh, 2000, I always thought of the Paper Mate flare. Nothing extraordinary, fabulous, fancy, you know. There you go. There you have it. Right down to the clip design. So, um... That's one reason I was never in a hurry to purchase one. I didn't think it was that extraordinary. But I keep hearing good things about it. And so it's like, well, I must experience that. Um, and I'm looking at this clip. It does look like it has sharp edges here, you know, from the flat top and the flat sides. It, it gives a, a sharp uh, corner section here, whereas this one is kind of, uh, smooth rounded uh, beveled on the corners it's not sharp and again on the bottom so that right there surprised me a little bit it looks like it's a very sharp edge I can feel the sharpness but it's not like it's so sharp it's going to cut my skin so and it does have right at the top of the spring I don't know if I can get that there's the Lamy logo or name and this is a uh, spring hinge clip in case you need to uh, clip it to a shirt pocket or page. So that's that's fabulous. And let's pull the cap off and see what we have inside. It is a clip or a push cap. And it's not a twist. And okay, I'm experiencing that for the first time. It does feel a little springy. But it, the spring doesn't push back. The spring only pushes like one direction and then a clip. I don't know if you're able to hear that. 
um, very small little click sound. And that click sound is made from these small little protruding points. There are two of them. They're on the, not the grip section, but just above the grip section. And that is what clips the pen cap in place. So one more time. Yeah, a little spring and a little clip. click. All right, so looking at, um, I don't know if we can get light inside here. It's not a threaded design inside the cap. It's just a another layer uh, that would grip onto these little protruding points here. And the grip section is not, there's no curve um, or specification to the grip section. It's just a streamlined straight down design that goes into the barrel. It is fatter or wider in the middle and then slender again at each point, um, at each end. So cigar shape, torpedo shape, what do we think? All right, if you see this area here, this is a an ink window. It lets you allow, <laughs> it lets you, it allows you <laughs> to see um, if you have ink in your barrel, there's no need to take the pen apart um, unless you need to change the nib, but you cannot buy the nib separately. So the only way you could change the nib if you were to have another Lamy, Lamy 2000 that you exchange nibs with. So, um, and again, that nib, that is a unique design. It is 14 karat gold nib, so it's gonna be soft. And that's one of the unique features of the design of this pen. And the reason I want to try it is it reminds me of, and I'm not going to do a comparison review today, but I will come back later and do that. It reminds me of my um, Pilot Vanishing Point, which this is the Decimo model. Let's just look. You can see the similarities here. Also a 14 karat gold pen. Or nib, sorry. And so continuing, um, you know, I'd like to ink it up and do a writing test with you. Um, but let's talk about the body a little bit. It does remind me, um, it's a matte finish. And it does remind me of my most recently purchased and shared pen, um, the Estabrook Camden from Camden, New Jersey, where the RCA records are made. So it has that same uh, line uh, design in the barrel, uh, in the finish, very similar. So that's what it reminds me of. All right, um, before I ink this, um, I wanna talk about the body. It is made of a polycarbonate material called Macrolon, and I'll put the spelling of that on the screen. Um, it is a combo of resin and fiberglass, so it's lightweight and sturdy like carbon fiber. And my other carbon fiber pen is my Monteverde Ritma. This is my other carbon fiber body pen. That was a special edition that I recently shared. So let's... Um, flush some water through it. I cannot um, flush this as I normally would any new nib by removing the nib section and, and using my bulb syringe. So I'm just going to pull up some water um, using the twist mechanism of the piston fill. And I might mention that in all my other Lamy pens, my uh, All Star and Safari models, um, they always test the nibs before they send them out, so there'll be a little bit of blue uh, ink residue on that. So if you see that, not to worry. Um, I'm gonna pull up some water here and expel. Let's see, let me know if I'm in frame. Okay, let everything looks clear and clean. We try one more dunk. Pull up some water and expel. 
just give a little rinse here. So nothing uh, on the nib section. And let me see. Dab that. Oh, there's the blue. Okay. Yeah. So it's been factory tested. Um, it's a good thing to rinse your new nibs uh, before inking. There we go. Uh, upon my second pull draw of water, I was getting the the blue ink residue um, dripping out. So very faint in the drips, but in my um, my view, I can see the the blue shade tint. So you may not be able to see it on the camera, but just lighter now. I'm gonna give it one more rinse to make sure we are clear and ready to go. Okay, it looks like it's clear here on the water. See, I still get the blue dots. I'm gonna try one more time. And I must say, I'm gonna turn this over and show you the back of it. The breather hole is very low to the nib, so you can um, immerse this pen in a bottle of very low amount of ink, and it would still be able to draw up water because of, here we are, all clear, all clean. Um, the breather hole section is so low to the bottom of the nib, you could immerse that into um, an ink bottle that is very low and it would still draw up ink. So we're ready to ink up. And my ink of choice today is going to be uh, my Noodler's Black, uh, my water water-based ink. So it's bulletproof um, and should be safe. Look at me being safe. Um, I've dropped a nib off a, a a pen off the table before and bent my nib, so it's like it's it has me as um, cautious as leaving a bottle uncapped. All right, uh, I don't know if I'm in frame here. I don't have to go very deep into this bottle because Noodler's ink bottles are extremely full like you have to be careful when you open the cap because you could have an issue all right and i can see in my ink window that i've captured my ink there um one difference in this pen it's not like you have the twisby um look how clean this is actually with me dipping the end of that pen, I don't know if I'm, how focused I am. Wow, not much to clean up there. So, but I will wipe it for caution, caution's sake. There you go. Um, but one of the, the issues with this pen is you do, not have um, the demonstrator clear part of the barrel to see how much ink is in. You really have to rely on the ink window, which um, since I've inked, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but since I've inked, it's um, visible. All right, and this pin, I must say, is postable. It has a smooth glide and it gets tighter as the cap moves along to the wider girth of the pin. So it does not click, it does not screw, but there we go. And it does have a tight, secure um, fit. If you would like to post, it's not overly, you know, uh, long in the hand. But if you prefer to write unposted, it's also a comfortable size. And since I mentioned that it remind me so much of the Pilot Flare or those flare marker pens, let me do that. Let me post that. Because this is what, for years and years and years, I was so used to using. And my grip section here, this is the length of the pin. Of course, it's a lot um, more lightweight. And I would never write unposted. Um, I always had a habit of posting 
all my caps on my pens as not to lose them. You know, when I finished writing, it was right there and I would just cap and be done. Um, until I using, started using fountain pens, um, I kind of got out of the habit of posting all my pens. So, little fun fact about Marcy. All right, I wish I had um, weighed this before I inked it, which I didn't put too much ink in it. So let's give it a go on the scale and see what we have. I don't know if the glare is covering up your numbers there. Let me give it a try. So full pin is 26 and a half grams. Um, and just the pin, if you were to hold unposted. Oh, there we go. Just over 17 and a half grams, 17.6 in our cap. 8.85 so almost 9 so it's not um, too weighty but it's not too light either all right let's give um, my nib a test and I failed to mention I ordered this from endless pens I did get a sale uh, bargain email notification of a sale and that's why I went ahead and decided to take advantage um, of the sale price and experience this Lamy 2000 for myself. All right. So, fresh out of the chute, here we go. All right, this is a German uh, nib. I did not expect it to be as fine as um, Japanese nibs, um, and I did order the extra fine, so I am pleased with that. I should have written the 2000 first. Lamy 2000, extra fine, and it is inked with um, Noodler's Black Bulletproof ink. And I don't know if you can hear the slight, slight feedback on that nib. That's not much. Um, I do know that my nib is touching my paper. Um, it's not so buttery smooth that it's just gliding, but it's not scratchy either. I don't know if that um, explanation helps you in the least. Horizontal line width, vertical line width, there's not much difference. We're getting the same measurements here. And this um, not too wet of a writer, so it would dry quickly in um, your journal. Or in my case, I like to use uh, all the Tomoe River paper. Um, so on this day, Saturday, by the way, I've had this pen for a few days, but my internet has been out at home. And so I haven't been able to share and post. All right, I will be adding this to my ink journal. Um, I'm liking that. I like the looks of this Noodler's ink. It's not too black, it's like a dark gray, which complements this pen nicely. As you know, if you want for um, a, bit, a classic business look, um, this pen would suit that need well. Not like my flashy, flashy novular, you know, which uh, gains attention in meetings. So, or, you know, there you go. Uh, one extreme to the next. Classy or flashy. <laughs> so thank you for spending some of your precious moments with me today. God bless. Bye-bye.